Gabby Petito's case has now sparked new interest in finding other missing persons, prompting people online hunting for clues to focus on other cases, including missing people of color who don't garner as much national attention. Missing white woman syndrome is what it's been referred to as the historic tendency for national attention to gloss over cases of missing minorities. In the state of Wyoming, where Petito went missing, according to a state report that was released in January, January. 710 indigenous people, mostly girls, were reported missing over the past decade. That report also states that 30 percent of indigenous homicide victims were covered by the media, while closer to 51 percent of cases involving white people got media coverage. Here's some of those missing cases involving people of color, like Mary Johnson Davis, an indigenous woman in Washington state who was last seen walking along a road to a friend's house on the Tulalip Reservation on November 25th, 2020. She was not reported missing until December 9th, and the FBI is offering up $10,000 to help find her as her family searches for answers. Then there's 39-year-old Maya Millette, a mother of three. She's now been missing for more than nine months. She was last seen at her family home in Chula Vista, California, and her family is still waiting for answers. Adita Ja Britton, a member of the Round Valley Indian Tribe, was abducted at gunpoint from the Round Valley community of Cavello, California, in February of 2018. Authorities there have renewed a call for witnesses to come forward as her family remembers Britain as a 4.0 high school student and star athlete. Daniel Robinson is a young geologist last seen in Arizona. Robinson went missing in the desert outside Buckeye, Arizona in late June. His family claims authorities haven't done enough to find him, and police say a landowner actually found Robinson's damaged Jeep on July 19th, about four miles from the job site where he was last seen. These are just some of the many missing persons cases of color and indigenous people here in the United States. Director of the Wyoming Division of Victim Services and chair of the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Persons Task Force is Kara Chambers. and She's joining us this morning. Kara, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, as we noted, you heard there, there have now been 710 indigenous people, mostly girls, uh, reported missing in Wyoming over the past decade. So how has this historic tendency for national attention to just gloss over cases of missing people of color impacted these cases? Well, that's an excellent question. I mean, the question is to the media is why, why don't black and brown bodies get the same amount of attention? Um, I think the harm is that uh, you you just don't have as many eyes on the case. I mean, I think your your story earlier was a perfect example. The more press and the more attention Gabby's case has received, which, by the way, is wonderful. We're certainly not saying it deserves any less. We're just saying we need to leverage this across the board. But, you know, you have new leads coming in, it seems, every day. And, and that's key. And that's why uh, media attention is so important. Now, you've said that in reporting about indigenous victims that you tend to see negative character framing with more violent and graphic langu language. Explain that a little bit more. And how does that deter people from reporting that their loved ones are even missing? Sure. Well, as the graphics you pointed out, you know, there's there's a real diminished even uh, presence of, of stories on indigenous individuals. And as you stated, the report found that most of the language involved in, in those stories was was very negative, um, had negative character uh, framing, was more likely to be descriptive of the crime and in, in maybe some more violent fashion, whereas white victims were portrayed as uh, loving family members, were more likely to have a story come out while they were still missing, which is also key because we realize the attention that is given to these cases can be crucial in, in, in breaking a case. Um, you know, and so the, the concerns that we have is, is that that could have a chilling effect, that these families, heaven forbid, they they see these very negative articles about other Indigenous victims and, and certainly don't want that for their own loved ones. Um, and so, you know, you, you have to wonder if there isn't a cycle that, that maybe that's why these families don't come forward as quickly. Um, and so, you know, we have to do better because we, we've absolutely realized that it's crucial uh, 
to make sure that all of these stories are broadcast. You know, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, a lot of black and brown communities are starting at a different place. They may not have the same resources to leverage to get their story out there for those loved ones. Um, and that's why stories like this are so important um, to raise the profile. And again, not saying any less uh, coverage for, for others, but more for the rest. Well, and you just mentioned uh, that the huge attention that's been giving to Petito's case is good. It just needs to be, uh, there needs to be more coverage for everyone else. So is that sort of the major takeaway uh, from the attention given to Petito's case is that exact point? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, the more we, we raise the voices of the missing of all colors, of all creed, uh, the better. So it, it's so important that you're doing stories like this to make sure that there's a more level playing ground for everyone. Right, and we're having this conversation. So Wyoming began looking into the issue of missing indigenous people in the state in 2019, uh, when Governor Gordon was asked to consider developing this task force to look into the missing and murdered, and he pledged to do so. And you were there for that moment, I know. So how has the task force affected the mission to find these missing people? Are you, are you happy in the direction that it's been going? Yes, Kira, we're very happy with the direction. I mean, it, it was a student-run event back in April of 2019 that really brought this to Governor Gordon's attention. And as as, I, as you mentioned, he on the spot committed to starting this task force, which was so important. Um, and, you know, the, the report that you've referenced was really the first step. We realized as a state um, and in victim services, where I am, that we hadn't done a good job of getting the data and looking at where we were and, and that whole old adage, if you don't know where you've been, you might not know where you're going. Um, and so, yeah, we are very encouraged. We're so pleased uh, with the attention that this report uh, that was compiled by the University of Wyoming Survey and Analysis Center and, and the brilliant researchers who are out there who are still continuing to gather data because, you know, this doesn't end with one report of saying, here's everything we're doing wrong. Um, you know, we've, we've really had some positive outcomes from this. I mean, again, uh, one of the focuses was the media uh, uh, disproportionate uh, coverage. And so here we are, and that's amazing. Um, we've also been able to uh, get a tribal advocate on our Wind River Indian Reservation, as which was another recommendation. So I think it is positive. I think we've had an enormous outreach of, of participants. You know, I originally held uh, the very first task force meeting in July of 2019, uh, pre-COVID. So it was a room that was far too many people in the room at the time, but we, we just were overwhelmed with the interest from the community, uh, indigenous, white alike, um, who wanted to look at this issue. So we're, we're moving in the right direction. Director of the Wyoming Division of Victim Services and the Chair of Missing and Murdered Indigenous Persons Task Force, Kara Chambers, you are doing admirable work. Thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you so much for having us. You bet. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.